right, hello everyone and welcome to the 10th session of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, we are set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. If you follow my other games at all, this is in the same canon as Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers, but you don't really need to have watched any of those games to appreciate and enjoy October. If you are play, interested in playing catch-up, though, you can find the VODs on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, just two really quick points of order this week. Uh, the first is today is our Halloween episode. Um, how spooky slash creepy it is is kind of going to be dependent on the players, but I think I've got a good few things working out here. Uh, the second announcement is that we are taking next week off, which means the next DSO session, session 11, will take place on November 10th. Uh, with that said, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with Dag. As is You're tradition, muted. Dag is muted. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Dag. I am your Zaldin Captain Kijwik. Tonight's going to be an amazing episode. And if you want to talk about it afterwards, hit me up at Trek Nexus. Uh, John in Seattle here. Um, I play Jaro Terrell, uh, the space aviator of the group. Um, and uh, look forward to playing today. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play the chief engineer, the Cation uh, Lieutenant Jana. And I'm sure that'll be a great game as always. Uh, hey, guys. I'm Aaron. I'm uh, Dr. Dottig, the Tellerite Chief Medical Officer. Uh, and I would just like to make an amendment to John's statement. Uh, Terrell is actually a space cadet, not a space aviator. I'm Watney. I play the Chief of Security of Deep Space, Deep Space October, um, Lieutenant Commander Stecko. And I also play uh, Counselor Jen Watney, the wife of Captain Kijwick. And of course, I'm ELH, your Game Master. And with that, let's go ahead and run our fancy intro. and welcome back and something i like doing for all my star trek games is having the players do an opening log uh today i believe that comes from mr terrell yes it does so uh stardate 92879.8 i think uh well anyway personal log lieutenant terrell uh going on 16 hours straight now who the hell makes starships that focus on fancy medical bays and science labs. None of that crap matters if your ship can't get you there. The Umbriel is a beautiful ship, but you know, you can't judge a ship's engines by its paint job. This ship's engines are crap. Even the HAL had more giddy up and go than this piece of crap. Well, if we can get this ship to pop into a new gear, I, I guess I'm just going to have to spend more time learning the limits of this vessel. I guess we'll have to find out if preemptive proper planning, practice, and preparation prevents prior pitiful, piss-poor, pathetic performance. And now it seems people are flocking to the hollow suites all across the station to take part in some scary hollow novel called Citadel Station. What these people don't seem to understand is that without real risk, there is no room for real fear. I know I don't have time for that crap. Well, on another note, I've been thinking a little bit about my recent ch recent chat with uh, Jana. Maybe I will go talk to the captain's wife, but right now, 
and most of other times I do have better things to do. Maybe I could get a Valkyrie loaded into the shuttle bays of this cow. Jaro out. And of course you may have at least one momentum for that alliteration that you just casually dropped in there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we are actually going to start today's session uh, on the promenade where Terrell, you are more or less just walking along, minding your own business when uh, a certain Cation couple uh, bumps into you almost by accident. So Dag and uh, Aaron, if you guys are Dag, oh no, it was Dag no, and no, Matthew, no. if you two would take it away. Please no. You're muted, Dag, as is tradition. I mean, it, it, Go ahead. Ladies first. No, okay. <laughs> Um, oh, L Lieutenant, Lieutenant, I I've been meaning to speak to you. You, you, you run the, the ships that are coming in and out of the station, right? Ah, uh, no. No, no, I thought you were in charge of um, uh, the flight deck and uh, maybe you must be able to help us. We had this import of uh, Terralian silk that was coming in. Mm, oh, it's lovely. You should there's see some kind the, of... the... Go ahead, honey. I know my place. That would, no, it's just, it, it, it was for you after all, you wanted it and we, we, we spent so long trying to order it. Oh, the paisley is out of this world. It's so beautiful. The blue and the white, oh, you should see it. And what's wrong with your shipment? Uh, yeah, well, maybe it, it's been held it's, up. Yeah, that. Held up? Uh, oh, yeah. that's. That's definitely something you need to talk to Stetko about immediately. I thought you said you this was Stetko. Tonight, I mean, well, no, no, dear. I mean, Stetko is that um, that rather onerous woman who uh, who attacked you on the promenade. You do remember that, don't you? Oh, yes. We needed the food. That horrible, horrible woman. She was oh, human, I right? Could, I, know, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think so. <laughs> You know, uh, but you know, she she has a she has a thing for silks, and uh, she may have very well have confiscated your uh, silks. Now, for now you see purpose. why we can't talk to her. We need you to help us, Mister. Um, what's your name? Uh, uh, my name's Jonna, Lieutenant Jonna. Mister John, no, you. I know Mister Jonna. He's the engineer. He's that gorgeous little cub. <laughs> Jaro's going, over, with him going over to a replicator, mm -hmm. and he's uh, going to replicate a laser pointer. Okay, you you have a laser pointer now. I have no idea where this is going, but I'm letting you have the laser pointer. Continue on. So, um, yeah, but you know, one of them is going to be the people that can help you out. I have absolutely no jurisdiction when it comes to um, Stetco's uh, confiscation of um, contraband. Now, no, no, listen what here, young man. Let me, let me you know, he'll pull up a pad and start running through the crew manifest of the station. It says right here that you're the flight controller for this station. You're in charge of allowing ships to dock and uh, organizing where they go. This is how this works, isn't it? Yes, but I have absolutely no say in the cargo on those vessels. I just get him into the ship base and he shines the laser pointer on the floor and just starts moving it around. <laughs> And then while they're distracted, he's going to run away. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, my God. Because that scene could only end one of two ways. I love it. All right. So uh, speaking of Jana, we're actually going to transition to the armory where uh, Jana has stopped in to uh, check in on a problem that Stetko is having. Oh, thank goodness you're here. I've been messing around with this for hours now. Um, so this type two, why don't you just take a look at it? She like holds it out to him. Uh, okay. And he will reach out and retrieve the phaser and then start looking at its casing. Um, I, it looks like a regular phaser to me. Is it, it? Is this like some kind of disguised explosive device or is it a changeling? Uh, well, a changeling well, hopefully is not. Um, so what setting is it on? 
Uh, level three. Minimum right. stun. And I just pulled it off the charger. Are you sure about that? I mean, That's it's not I charged. Mean. Anything low uh -oh. to mid-level stun doesn't hold a charge. Battery drains. Have you tried taking the power cell out and then putting it back in and trying to charge it again? I did that. And then I started to realize I was doing that with all of them. So that's why I called you. Uh, well, I, I appreciate that. But uh, to be fair, that's really more of a security concern. That, that, that doesn't sound like something that I did, can't, you can perform regular maintenance on your phasers, can't you? Yeah, but it makes me think that it's not the phasers. It's something to do with the EPS conduits in the wall. Excuse me for a moment. Um, and he will go over and start scanning the EPS relays behind the uh, the uh, charging docks. All right. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, reason engineering difficulty of one. And I know my ship would apply. Most definitely. Really, it's I know your station, but you know. Wow. Oh, okay. Just Ooh, boy! Wow. Um. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know what I want to have happen here. It's going to succeed, but there's going to be two complications. So first things first. Uh, I'm giving you access to uh, Phaser Power Pack Diagnostics. It's a handout, and that's going to be uh, what you are learning. But as he's learning this, Stetco. Uh, mm -hmm. What you notice is that uh, one of your, shall we say, more drunk and disorderly persons that you have in the brig, and you know who this is, we all know who this is, a certain Klingon just casually steps out of his cell as the brig door or the brig force field just deactivates. I was under the impression that I had another 72 hours in holding. You do. So get back in there. Make me. <laughs> now, now, Captain, that's not exactly conduct becoming a warrior, is it? I, I Isn't mean, it? I really wouldn't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing doesn't things your, out there. Doesn't your sticks. honor dictate finishing punishment, which is bestowed upon you or something? I don't think it's written in there anywhere. Isn't there some kind of like test that Klingons go through where they get jabbed with like laser sticks or They're something like that? They're paint sticks, not laser sticks. Laser sticks, are, they wouldn't do I, anything. I, Lasers I, don't do me. anything. You're right. They are a woefully inefficient weapon system compared to most m modern technologies. Nonetheless, I think my point still stands. Don't Klingons like enjoy suffering that, that proves your metal as a warrior? The anniversary of my day of ascension isn't for another three months. Okay. Um, it's called delaying gratification. Okay. Okay. She's going to grab a phaser off the wall. Mm hmm. And what are you doing with that phaser? Guide him in back into the brig. Can I be the security officer next time? <laughs> wow. Donna, Just... what is going on? She's going to like stand there. It's not on or anything. But it only works on kill. Apparently. Are you sure you uh, you want me to answer that question, sir? I would love an answer. Yes, she's like talking to him okay. while looking at the Klingon cord. Okay, the answer is that actually the phaser that you're holding isn't really powered on any. It side. isn't. It works on kill, just not on stun. So be careful. Um. Listen, I have some things to do. Why don't I just leave, let you both figure this out, and I'll, I'll call you later. Why don't you just leave, and then that will be, it'll just be time served, and you don't even have to call. How about that? Agreed. I'll maybe see you the next time I'm on the station. 
Right. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about transferring anyway. I my <laughs> my route is disparate and different. I could go basically wherever I want. I only anyway, I'm just going to go. Oh, I know when I've overstayed my welcome. I'm not an idiot. All right. Uh, Don't you say a word. He's pointing at Jana. I would never disparage a a warrior, Captain. Uh, Not after I've been a part of his crew for five minutes. You what? And it's it's a long story. You remember when we clasp him on the shoulder and say, "Once a member of my crew, always a member of my crew." And he'll sort of slap Jana on the shoulder as he leaves. Uh, that was, uh, that's really uncomfortable and awkward. I, I understand why you dislike him. Yeah, just what's what's going on? Uh, well, actually, this again kind of falls under your purview, I think, because it seems as if the power couplings to this charging dock have been sabotaged. Oh. Computer. You know, uh, who has been in and out? Well, first of all, Jana. Can you tell how long ago this happened? Uh, can I make that determination, the LH? Uh, not actually with uh, your no levels of success here. So you just know that it was sabotaged or otherwise modified or disrupted. Would Stecco know the last time the phasers were functioning? Uh, roll me a insight and security difficulty of one. Okay. Starbase security systems? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. Hey, look at that. Three successes. That's two momentum. Yeah. Uh, Last time they were working was uh, about a week and a half ago. Or at least working to their full capacity. It's kind of been a slow drain, if you get what I mean. Okay. So answer me this, GM. Mm -hmm. Are there security cameras in Star Trek? I mean, technically in Star Trek, there's sort of nebulous cameras that record everything but the interior of uh, quarters. So it's kind of just whatever the plot demands. Okay. Computer cross-reference entry logs for the armory within the last week and uh, isolate any um, anyone who's not a regular that's been in here in that time frame. So the uh, the computer works for a second, giving you the prerequisite beeps and whatnot, and says, uh, no unauthorized personnel found. Um, Jonna, do you think that it was sabotaged from this location? Uh, you know what, Lieutenant, uh, to be honest, I'm picking up some like weird baryonic interference on a covariant subspace band, and uh, that's really kind of mucking up with my sensor readings, so... Uh, I can't really tell you anything. Okay, so she's going to get her tricorder out and scan the area for anything that might be out of place. All right. And yeah, uh, I'm going to say that you actually don't find anything, but I am going to give you access to the same handout so that you also know what's going on. Okay. Here's her power pack. Oh, okay. Um, is this every single? Uh, is this every charging station, Jana? Uh, I will actually put that to you, GM. Is it just this one charging station, or has this uh, the same oh, effect it's all of them. impacted the rest of them? It's all of them. And um, how soon do you think you could fix it? Oh, I mean, I just have to get behind the panel and reconnect a few relays. That that should take you know a few minutes, really. Okay. Uh. Yeah, let me know when that's done. I'm going to work on figuring out how this happened. Uh, Very good. Um, I I did hear the computer's report. Do you think that this might have been actually carried out by another clandestine organization that's in the midst of sabotaging the station, just like with that biomedic gel heist? Like the hand? Yeah, still don't get that name. Is that what it's called, GM? Mm, Close enough. What is it? (laughs) No, I think it's funnier this way. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, it very well could be, we didn't manage to root out every single operative on the station. Well, uh, I'll, I'll leave that in your more than capable hands, given how skilled you are at killing people that must translate into, you know, investigating crimes somehow. Oh. Uh, I'm just going to go behind this panel now and repair some faulty relays. Mm. Okay. And boo, since you seem to be terrified of me. <laughs> well, you did just like murder that poor creature that we met a couple weeks ago without any hesitation. So I... The, Uh, I mean, I'm Starfleet, so. You know, they didn't cover murder in the academy for me. That was not one of my courses. But in um, engineering. Yeah, you know what? I, even though I'm really afraid of you, I, I bet I could take you in a fist fight. Just so you know, I have extensive security training. Just. Did you see my fight with Cord? He's he's really drunk all the time. Also, he runs a garbage scale. Literally, so. It's you would like know, wouldn't you, ins- crewmate of that ship? <laughs> it was for five minutes, and it was just so that it didn't blow up and destroy our station. Right. Well, I thank you for that, and maybe you can be a uh, moonlighting security uh, deputy. That's, That's a joke. Bad. That's a joke. <laughs> I actually think that's a perfect opportunity. We're going to shift away to Med Bay, uh, where... Uh, we're going to focus first on Mr. Dottig. And Dottig, you're kind of doing your thing. You're going over reports. You're going over, uh, mm. you know, what's uh, what's new in sickbay when uh, you discover something a little odd about your logs. Hmm. Notice John? Uh, y- yes, sir. Uh... Why do we have more than 200 doses of alkazine? We do. Yes, it would appear that way, yes. That's odd. I have right... Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. We do have 200. Why do we have 200? Yeah, I I requisitioned 35. Do you think we're... I, I got nothing for you, sir. I mean, I logged these myself. Did did you maybe log it wrong? And he'll just look at her say, I'm going to give you a moment to rephrase. No, no, I'm pretty cool with that. I will take my punishment. No, I don't think that I logged it wrong. Well, As a matter um, of fact, I am fully confident that I did not. Well, I, I mean, if I just... It's still in locker A, yeah? According to this, yes. And uh, Chan gets up, goes over to locker A, opens it up, and uh, there's only 35 in there. Can you please send a report to Lieutenant Dorset? Ask for clarification, maybe a diagnostic of the computer log. His uh, requisition software may be malfunctioning again. Right. Um, I'll do that. And as that's happening, we're actually going to shift just a little bit in sickbay over to the counselor's office, which we haven't really seen so far. Uh, but inside the counselor's office are the captain and uh, his wife. So take it away, you two. I hope this office is satisfactory compared to the last one. The last one, yes. It's a lot more busier. Um, you know, the, the, the new, the being at the station is great. I mean, I miss salt, but, um, I get to serve a number of younger counselors that I'm mentoring. So, uh, as I get to pick the more interesting patients. Seems right at home. Yeah. Do you like my little Clementine statue here? I do. 
I haven't seen the Delky in a long time, ever since Clementine left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking, um, do you want to keep naming our pets after food? Because I was thinking about adopting another kitten soon, so. What would you like to name it? And don't say Sprout Tentacles. No, I don't know. I don't have any ideas. I've always liked the name Cookie. Cookie. Mm-hmm. Right. Taryn. So she kind of leans in and looks at his face and kind of like strokes his cheek. Oh, yeah, it looks like Dot did, did a good job after Jaro hit you in the face with that bottle. Not like it's the worst thing that you've ever seen happen to me. <laughs> That's true. At least it wasn't me patching you up this time. Yeah, your bedside manner is way better. <laughs> I, I haven't really talked to him all that much yet. I'm kind of nervous to be around him, but we'll see. Well, well, they say you can hear him anywhere, so you just know where to hide. This is a pretty good hiding spot. And because I find it funny, I'm spending two threat. Dottig, you walk into what you thought was the bathroom, but it's not. It's the yeah. council's <laughs> office. What the hell are you two doing in my storage closet? Doctor, do you need a brain scan? I don't do those anymore, honey. I don't believe so. My we can, last we physical have... was... To, the question remains. This was a storage closet. I had uh, several crates in here. Doctor, I've been here for several months now working. You are as quiet as, um, how the humans say, a church mouse. And? I had no idea this was your workspace. Well, now you do. I've seen you come in, you sort of look around, and then I put my head down and you just sort of disappear. This is where you've been? Yes. It doesn't, you know, I'm a counselor, so my patients need quiet. Right, but this, the is walls. A, this is a hospital. Right. Matters of the body. It's your right. job. Yep. Matters of the mind is my job. Okay. Well... Where is the mind hospital? Right here. Mm. Doctor, it's interesting you're not sure about the duty shifts. I thought you've been signing off on those. Has Nurse Chan been forging your signature on those for the last few months? Uh, I assume so. Additionally, I'm curious about the chief of security's treatment that you gave her, uh, enhancing her empathic abilities. Have you followed up on that experimental treatment? Ah, the silophenidate you're referring to. Um, no. She's reported right. no additional symptoms, and um, I consider that clinical trial a success. Uh, I'm hesitant to continue to tamper with um, empathic or telepathic physiology. There are always unknown consequences. Right. Well, why don't I take that off your plate and follow up with her? Well, I mean, I... Hardly think you're qualified. That actually might be high praise coming from uh, Dr. Dodig. It's right about then uh, that two individuals walk into sickbay for different reasons, of course, but they're both there. Uh, the first is, of course, uh, Lieutenant Terrell. You've been putting this off for a while and maybe you've decided let's just eat that bullet. Second one that uh, walks in is uh, Lieutenant Jana. You, uh, Jana, you've gotten a report from Dorset that apparently there's some sort of issue with uh, the library computer that's running sickbay. And it's one of those crazy things where you guys like come from ops ends of the corridor and almost like run into each other as you both step up towards the door. Hey man, uh, you all right? Oh yeah, just just tired and I. I'm so tired. I'm actually here. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just came because, you know, check up. Yeah. You still, uh, still not sleeping that well. Well, that ship needs a lot of work. You're not still kind of complaining about those engines, are you? What? what? I have to complain about those engines because nobody else is complaining about those engines. 
look, she might have, you know, not the nicest legs in Starfleet, but she has other assets that are incredibly appreciable. <laughs> yeah, she's got a rather big asset. I'm taking well, one threat yes, for I mean, freezing. That, that sensor uh -huh. array is, is quite impressive, I will admit that. Nurse Chad looks up and says, can I help you gentlemen, or are you just going to talk uh, talk shop in my sick bay? Um, well, uh, I thought I'm... you asked for my help. Oh, it's you, John. I was expecting Dorset. Yeah, uh, Dotig's got some sort of problem with the computer. You should probably ask him about that. Uh, great. Uh, Joe, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll let you do whatever it is that you came here to do. Um, if you want to talk, you know how to get in touch with me. No, it's just a, you know, checkup type thing. Sure. Uh, all of us need a good checkup every now and again. I, I'm just going to go over there now um, and talk with the doctor. Excuse me. <clears throat> and again, it's one of those and funny things where you both the... head towards the same area. Like, Dottig, you're coming out of the counselor's office at this point. And Jana and Terrell, you're both headed in that same direction. So it's one of those awkward situations where you you say goodbye to someone, but you're still walking with them, and it's it's a really awkward scenario. What do you want to go first, or no, no, go Can ahead. Can I help you? Ah, uh, he's here for you. All right, and why are you here? You know, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna hang out over here. And he like leans up against the wall. You um you feeling all right? You look a little tired. Oh yeah, I'm tired, but you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You just going to loiter in my sick bay? Oh, you know, I mean <laughs> you know, if I'm being honest, you're kind of in my way. I think we'll squint a little bit at him, but the faintest, slightest hint of a smile um, plays at the corners of his mouth and says, well, don't let me hold you up. I know you're a very busy man. And he'll sort of step around and say, no, Lieutenant John, right this way, please. Uh, of course, sir. I assume that you're here to have that gland looked at. Uh, no, I was called because of some kind of engineering concern regarding the data banks here. Yes, the uh, uh, data yeah, banks. The yes. Alcazine, yes. Yeah. Of course. Uh, also, Doctor, have you ever heard of this, this human concept known as doctor-patient confidentiality? Where you don't start talking about people's medical conditions when you're in a hallway filled with people? You know, I didn't realize you were so sensitive. Touche. Okay, fine. Yes. I, <laughs> I am a very delicate soul, okay? So, please. Are you, um... Are you getting smart with me? Well, it, looks, it looks good on you. It's good. I keep doing it. Look, I, I'm kind of tired, think, too. Why do you think I drive you so hard? So I want you to push back. It's no fun when your target doesn't fight back. Ask a Klingon. I, look, I, I already got into one altercation with a Klingon today. I don't want to... Let's just, just leave Klingons out of these metaphors and discussions about you know, development of character and the like, okay? Well... Of course, uh, Lieutenant, uh, sir. Right this way. Okay. What was the problem? What, what you, did you just call that me down here to insult me? Was that the whole issue about your databank, some kind of like ruse? No, no, I have, um, he'll hand him the pad. This is the um, insults are just the, uh, you know. Icing on the cake, as it were. Right, that's the yeah. one. I, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the taskbar egg on tarp of the uh, task tar tartar. Yes, the, the Taspar Tartar. Yes, very good. I was going to say it's the um, it's the Felicium to the Breckians. Right. Okay. Um, well, it looks to me like you just misentered the number of doses of this whatever it is that you were logging here. Mm. So no. Okay, it really does. This is not an no. engineering problem. No. 
I don't make those kinds of mistakes, Lieutenant. This is clearly some kind of mechanical fault, and I want you to get to the bottom of it. Sorry, Doctor, um, how old are you again? <laughs> I'm not too old to put a young whippersnapper like you in your place. You know, after what we saw in the bar and you got your jaw jacked by the captain, I'm not entirely sure that's the case, but... Uh... He dry gulched me. You keep telling yourself that. Uh, fine, I will investigate. I'll make sure that this is not some kind of senior moment. And, uh, you know... I am 44 years old. I'd hardly call myself a senior. I'm not... I'm not, uh, I'm not the dust and bones like the captain. I'm vital. I'm young. And it's right about them. The captain sort of pokes his head in and says, I'm sorry, what? You heard me. <laughs> but no, as, uh, as the captain and Dalton maybe get into a little bit, uh, Jana, I'd like you to roll me a uh, reason and engineering difficulty of one. Maybe don't roll six complications on this one. <laughs> Uh, and uh, would I know my station apply? Or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, would I have an applicable focus here? You would, yeah. Look at that. Three successes, which means you're up to five momentum total. I'm giving you access to another handout. This one is the SickBay Computer Diagnostic. So as he runs his tricorder over the uh, the computer banks in the uh, sick bay, looks like he gets a little bit concerned. And I'll let him describe why. Hmm. Well, uh, Doctor, it seems that you may have uncovered a more substantial issue than I had originally anticipated. And uh, in fact, it's probably good that it happened in sick bay because there's a, a nice confluence of our respective skills that will probably be necessary for us to, uh, well, figure out what the hell is going on. The bioneural gel packs in the station seem to be caught in some kind of strange, I don't know, cellular cognitive loop. Um, it's almost like they're fixated on a single thought insofar as, you know, computers can think. And you were extending this analogy from bioneural gel packs to brains. And I did get that D double plus, C double minus. So the analogy might not entirely hold. Uh, I'll forgive the misstep. Um, are you telling me that uh, the computer is obsessed? Well, that might be anthropomorphizing the bioneural gel packs a little bit, but, uh, you know, it, it, I suppose that could work. I mean, the bioneural gel pack um, is not a brain, and to my knowledge also is not a computer. It is uh, more like a synapse. True. I mean, the, the totality of the na network of both... Uh, isolinear relays and bioneural gel packs would be more akin to the computational processing center of a human body or cation body or telluride body or, you know, humanoid body, let's, let's say. And what I would say is, Kishwick, if you weren't already in the conversation, you are now as you sort of walk by. And you're muted. What is as this is about bodies? Uh, we seem to have some kind of issue with the uh, cryoneural gel packs on board the station. They're locked in some kind of recursive uh, analytical loop. Is that the entire station or just sickbay? Well, so far as I've only been able to detect the ones in sickbay. I mean, I could run a general scan of the station. Let's address it here in sickbay first. If you have someone in engineering who can run that scan, all the better. Uh, certainly. I will pass on a message to Lieutenant Sorrell to investigate the rest of the station. Uh, not Lieutenant Terrell, but um, our uh, logistics officer. Dorset. Well, before you do that, I actually have a very good question for Terrell. So obviously Terrell, Kiswick came out of Watney's office. Did you go in or did you linger? Uh, he's kind of just lingering. He's trying to figure out a reason to not go in. Well, I think I'm going to give you one. You just heard your name come from Jana. That sounds like an excellent opportunity for you to blow this off again. Oh, perfect. Uh, he he goes over. Uh, did you uh, did you need something, John? No, no, I don't need you to hold my hand. I think we've discussed that already. And yes, we have discussed it. And I'm sorry about that. 
Uh, Lieutenant, I'm pretty sure that you have an appointment with my wife. He does. Uh, yeah, she looked busy. She's not busy anymore. Captain, do you want to uh, do this or should I? I want to know when the last time you allowed a maintenance technician in here to service your cryoneuro gel packs. That's, well, let's see. The last uh, monthly maintenance cycle was six days ago. Okay. Jonna, it looks like you have a point of comparison with uh, whatever's going on with the, the gel packs regarding the last maintenance cycle. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll access those logs immediately. Um, and GM, could I mm -hmm. ascertain when this recursive loop perhaps began? Uh, if you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. What do you think, guys? Oh, absolutely. Give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away now. <laughs> All right. So interestingly, it's one of those things where, sure, the monthly cycle was six days ago. But now that you're looking at the logs and as you're sort of scanning the gel packs yourself, what you're noticing is that this problem actually goes back uh, a few weeks. I mean, it, it was very subtle at first. That's why it wasn't picked up because you're doing a deeper scan now. But it almost looks like this rumination, this sort of obsessive thought coming from the gel packs has been going on for about three to four weeks, if not longer. And... If I can trace it back, does that correspond with any of the major events that we've seen in the station, new sta ships docking, um, those are astrological phenomenon around us, or any of our past exploits? I'm trying to figure out how to do this because I want this to be difficult, but I don't want it to be prohibitively so. Why don't you roll me an insight engineering? I will make this a difficulty of four. And I tell you what, if Kijwick, Dottig, or Terrell want to chip in with their own insight engineering, I'll let you have an assist. But just know you only get one source of assist here, so choose your person wisely. Doctor, I think a keen eye like yours might be needed here. And uh, listen, we can't, I mean... Jared just walked off into the counselor's office. We really can't bother him because I just told him I don't need him to hold my hand. So <laughs> let's let's not have him hold my hand for this. Can... Your secret is safe with me, Lieutenant. I mean, you're the chief engineer. You don't need anybody to hold your hand. You've proven that. Now live it. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, all right. So I will buy two extra die using mm -hmm. momentum. Okay. And I guess... Neither of them have any engineering skill whatsoever, right? So, um, well, Dante has an engineering of, of one. He got a, a C double minus D double plus in engineering. So that sounds more like an F, but okay. Um, <laughs> ouch, ouch. I mean, you know, little column A, little <sighs> column B. That's a deep cut. <laughs> F double minus. <laughs> little from column A, little from column F. G. <laughs> A failure, right? <laughs> okay. Um, would I have Taking a focus a for that pod? Yes, you would have a focus. A threat for puns. And it's difficulty four, you said? Difficulty of four, yeah. Yeah. If I tap a value, which is how else can I maintain my reputation as a miracle worker? Okay. Yeah. And, okay. But I think that's we'll, going to wipe out all your momentum to get those two additional die. Uh, I think it would be three for one die because uh, I have one free for I know my station. Ah, then you're correct. Yes, it would be uh, one momentum remaining after that spend. Okay, Ooh, well, nice. that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's seven successes. So you actually get three of it back. So you're back up to four. There's three things that stick out to you, Jana. And the first is that you are aware that, of course, Terrell has been messing with the Umbriel. Uh, you do know that uh, he's been trying to load some sort of experimental new program, some flight programs into the Umbriel. It doesn't seem like it's connected, but I'm just giving you all the data here. Uh, the second thing 
is that, and this is kind of a, a weird thing, uh, what's happening down in engineering is you replaced uh, generators 1 through 3 on deck 24, and, you know, it's a standard sort of gener generator maintenance kind of a thing, wasn't anything important, um, but you were working near, or your teams were working near a gel pack. And then the third thing really only comes to mind because it's been sort of the talk of the station. That's about the same time that that new Hollow novel came in. But why would that be related to anything? Hmm. Oh, uh, Captain. You know how every single ship, at least once over its lifetime, has to be nearly destroyed by some kind of weird anomaly on a holodeck? <laughs> like a program becomes sentient or, I don't know, holograms start appearing across the ship or, you know, Moriarty kind of situation. That may not be the best way to introduce the problem, but yeah. It might not be the best way, but I think it's the most apt way uh, to segue into my concern. Apparently, uh, I mean, there are a few other engineering issues that I'm going to need to investigate before I make any de a definitive determination. But um, it seems like our situation kind of corresponds with um, the introduction of that new Hollow Suite program that's been so popular. Wonderful. It's a good program. How long do you need to uh, investigate it? Uh, well, I'll get some engineering teams down to investigate the cryoneural gel pack on deck 24. Uh, they were running some routine maintenance there. We'll see if that might have disrupted any of the uh, neural interlinks there. And uh, I got to talk to Jarrah about his weird programs that he keeps uploading to the, the Umbrail. Um, at, at any rate, uh, we'll, 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 we'll try to track that down too. But uh, give me Let's a couple hours. Let's take the holodecks offline. Are, are you going to tell uh, our, the proprietor of our, uh, our bar that, or should I? If the proprietor of said bar has an independent holographic maintenance system, they're not going to be alarmed by this. But for now, all of the Starfleet-owned holodecks should be taken offline. I'll coordinate with ops. So if I may real quick, um, just so you know, the station is equipped deck by deck with hollow emitters because you do actually have holographic crew. Are you taking all the emitters offline? We're not taking, we're not taking the crew necessary emitters offline, just the ones that are powered directly and explicitly with the holodecks. Okay. That are so... Starfleet that are Starfleet owned. Okay. So this would be the equivalent if uh, in, say, on the Enterprise D, you would cut it just to the holodecks. Yes. But the crew that are holograms can still walk around. Then we should probably order our holographic crew to report for maintenance and see if there's any problems with their resolution. Seems like engineering doesn't get any easy days, Lieutenant. You know, uh, I kind of said it as a joke to uh, Lieutenant Commander Stetko, but uh, yeah, engineers do kind of just save your lives every single day, uh, sir. <clears throat> I know, I know it. <clears throat> well, in some ways I owe my life to a hologram. So make sure that our crew are taken care of and I'll go talk to the bar proprietors to see about taking their holodecks offline while we investigate this problem. All right. I'd and be right very interesting before, to share that story with me at some point, but uh, yes, sir. And uh, right before we uh, leave sick bay, we actually go to Terrell. I think you finally step into the counselor's office. Yeah. Yeah, he pokes his head in. Oh, oh, Lieutenant Commander. I oh, sorry. I see you're busy. Oh no, I've been waiting for you. Come in. You can call me Jen. I'm good uh, friends with your mom. Yeah, sh sure thing, Commander. Uh, it's he, just really, Jen is fine. Actually, whatever you're comfortable with is great. Why don't you have a seat? Uh, he'll he'll sit down and he's like crossing his arms and like then moving his hand to his head and 
you know, doesn't seem to be able to get comfortable. So she like half sits down and she sees like the body language and she's like, oh, uh, do you want a glass of water? Oh, no, this, this chair is just really uncomfortable. You should get uh, Jana to replace it for you. I could probably replace it myself, I think. Uh, there's plenty of, of shops to find new chairs at, but I'll keep that in mind. Maybe you prefer a couch. Oh, no, couches for sick people. I'm, I'm good. You seem nervous. I'm just, I'm just tired. I've been up for like 16 hours working on the Umbriel. Oh, I'm guessing you were uh, having some serious issues then. Oh, it's just, it's got lousy engines. That's all. Mm. Do you usually overwork yourself? <laughs> he stops for a second. <laughs> Looks like he's thinking. Um, no more so than I need to. It sounds like if you're sleep depriving yourself the next day, it might not be such a good idea to overwork yourself every shift. But... It's okay. My, my normal duties I can do in my sleep anyway. Oh, is that so? Are you asleep oh, yeah. right now? Um, no. At least I don't okay. think so. Good. This isn't part of my normal duties. That's true. Um, and really, it's not mine either. I uh, was just asked by your mom, Sarah, to check in on you. Oh, well, you know, just let her know I'm doing well. And, uh, you know, thanks for the, you know, thanks for the visit there, Doc. And he starts to stand up. Of course. I'll be here if you need anything. Yep. Yep. And he uh, gives a wave and exit, exits hastily. And again, it's one of those situations where everybody's sort of clustered in the corridor getting ready to leave when all of a sudden there's a rolling brownout across the entire sick bay. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically one of those things where the power flickers, uh, you hear the hum of life support dim and come back up. But it is some form of power disruption that is very noticeable, if not visually, but audibly as well. Lieutenant Jana, is my sick bay not supposed to be equipped with auxiliary generators? Uh, it should have emergency power backups. Um, yeah. You're muted. There might be a gap in the change over time. That really shouldn't be the case. I mean, maintaining power to sick bay is among the most important parts of the station's power grid. Um, could I run some kind of scan to see what the cause of this might have been? With yeah, go ahead and roll me a reason engineering difficulty of two. While he's doing that, where's Stetco? I don't know. Where is Stetco? See, and I was just going to have Kishwick call Stetco to. He was going to call him if, if the power went out where she was. Oh, no, it, it was station wide. So. Oh, so just, he would just get a, a mutual, chirp. a mutual chirping. A mutual chirping. Yeah. Kishwick, yeah. Here. Well, we'll let the roll. Well, no, no, no. What oh, I was going to say is I'm going to give uh, John access to a handout, and you guys can role play as he reads. Okay. Uh, this is stat code to Captain Kishwick. What's your location, sir? I'm in sick bay. We just had a brownout. How's the rest of the station? Right. I'm in the armory. Um, from what I can tell, it's station-wide. I'll meet you guys there. Right on. Deploy security to the auxiliary med bay, just in case. We want to make sure that the people there get taken care of. If, okay. if there's more did, power fluctuations. Did your power go out in sick bay? We did have a flicker of power here. Jana is with me. He's looking into it. Okay. Uh, I start, I'll deploy the uh, the teams as needed, and I'll meet you there. Because we out. Terrell is looking over Jana's shoulder, you know, kind of all right, yeah, I'll give. Uh, I'll tell you what, John. I will also give you uh, access to this handout, Captain Kiswick. I think for the meantime, I'm going to see to the supplies in the emergency shelters. Make sure that we're well provisioned for medical supplies and uh, aid. Should we suffer a more permanent power loss? 
Understood. Uh, sir, I, I may have an explanation for the, uh, the bizarre power drain. Go ahead. It's. It seems as if our computer core uh, required an extensive amount of energy. Yes. Jara, did you have something to add or? Oh, no, no. <laughs> okay. He's I just, just kind of standing behind Jana, like saying what Jana's saying, <laughs> but not talking. <laughs> uh, doctor, <laughs> do you want to? Check on Jaro. I, he's kind of creeping me out a little bit. And oh, he's really close to me. Um, he's so, when you get the time, look up this ancient uh, Terran concept of a um, backseat driver. Oh, I was under the impression it was paramimicry, a horrible neurological condition. No, his um, his corneas lack the uh, the outer red rim. You would know. You're, you're, you're talking to Mr. D double plus C double minus in medicine here, so I have no idea what you're talking he's about. Fine. If you he's fine. He's, he's okay. fine, but he's trying to hold your hand. Okay. Uh, Jana will take a few steps away from Jaro. Uh, sorry, sir. Yes. Um, there was a massive dump of data from our core, um, a kind of a transfer of uh, data. It seems like it's just junk material, but the amount of data that was transferred required uh, a drain of power from other sections of the station. Ideas? Where did the information come from? Exactly. Well, it was uh, basically a transfer from our main computer core to the rest of the station. Any idea what it accessed from the main computer core? Could I ascertain the, well, no, uh, as I said, it's just random data, it seems. It's junk. Terrell, junk. if I may interject, Terrell, since you are backseat driving, I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering, please. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, you know what? <laughs> hmm. It's a difficulty three, if that changes your decision any. Just because it's, you know, it's Jana and they're having a little tiff right now. Uh, he is going to tap a value of uh, something to prove. Okay. Uh, and he is going to, um, on top of that, he's going to spend uh, uh, two momentum for an extra die. Okay. And I don't know whether or not I have a focus for this. Let me take a quick look. I think Starsh you... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, actually, I would give you uh, Starship Construction because that would apply to Station Construction as well. All righty. All right, so that's a total of five successes, which means you get that two momentum right back. Terrell, uh, and I guess this is more of an outer... outer Ah, out of character question for John. You remember oh, that one episode? One. Ooh, even better. Uh, you remember that episode of DS9 where uh, they essentially had to do an emergency beam out of the away team and they basically shunted all of their patterns and brain patterns into the holodeck? Do you remember that episode, more or less? Not maybe? really. Not really, Okay. So I'll, I'll break it down further. So basically in DS9, there was an episode where a runabout was exploding, if I remember correctly anyway, and they had to do an emergency beam out. Unfortunately, what happened was there was a problem with the transporter, so they had to shunt their patterns somewhere else. Well, the only system that was available... So is this like the... Is it, is it like the hollow system when we shut it off? Pushed itself out of the hollow system? Something along those lines, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, if, if I may, sir, um, I believe that the, well, as uh, Jonna was putting it, um, I think we have that, uh, that hollow, uh, hollow deck uh, calamity about to happen aboard DSO, because I think when we turned it off, uh, it reacted by dumping itself into the main computer.
Okay. Oh. That's unprecedented. Oh, sorry, John. I didn't didn't mean to. Sorry. Oh, oh no. But I mean, if that's correct, then, sir. I mean, I hate to keep bringing up the Starship Enterprise and its its tremendous exploits, which should have put us all to shame. But um, Moriarty, the sapient computer program that they developed, maybe we're dealing with something similar here. If something has transferred itself out of our hollow matrix as soon as you attempted to shut them down in order to preserve itself, we might be dealing with some kind of emergent intelligence or artificial intelligence. If so, it'll probably go back to the holodecks once we reactivate them. So what's the closest holodeck on this level? Let's restore power to that. And I don't know, sir, if I was, uh, well, uh, don't take this the wrong way. Uh, if I was a fish stuck in an aquarium and you let me out and gave me the ability to not be in the water anymore, I don't know if I'd go back to my little aquarium anymore once you, uh, open the path back unless it felt like that was the last pond with water in it after we drained the ocean uh, if it is a hollow if it is a hollow program it's got a whole station full of emitters that's true is there a potential for this program to somehow alter or tamper with or injure our holographic crew members so far we haven't had gotten any reports of our holographic crew members having problems so let's go with occam's razor let's restore power to the nearby holodeck and see if there's a program running if there is we'll go on board and see what we're dealing with dada jana terrell you're with me is stetco here yet I think by now Stetco would have arrived, yeah. She arrives slightly winded. Right on time. We're going to be investigating something on the holodeck, uh, Commander. So. Uh, is the, okay, can I get a little more info than, th than that? Something piggybacked aboard with a uh, holo program that's become pretty popular recently. And when we cut power to the holodecks, it took up residence in the computer core. Oh. So the plan is to reactivate one holodeck to see if it goes back to the ocean, so to speak. All right. Well, I would recommend we don't all go in at once. Good recommendation. All right. So, Jonna, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Jonna, do you think you can shunt power back remotely? Uh, I mean, I could do it, sir. I am a miracle worker, I guess, sort of now, in a way, not to uh, toot my own horn, but uh, saving billions of lives over a couple of days. Anyways, that's that's beside the point. My point is, I could do it, but it would probably be easier if I was in main engineering. If well, I'm going to need you at the holodeck with me, so grab a pad and let's go. No, no, sorry. I can't let you in a holodeck if it's compromised. I can't do that. We're, we're not going inside until we're sure it's safe. We just want to see what programs are running when we turn the power back on. Okay. Keep in mind, whatever's going on, if it's gotten into the computer core, it has access to all of our station data, it could very well be a trap. Could be, but I have a feeling if it was going to kill us, it would have done so already. And Unless it likes playing games. I also have to uh, side with uh, Stetco here, sir. Uh, your advanced years um, does not, you know, you, you shouldn't be in a direct confrontation. Sounds like a guy who got a D double plus in Zaldin biology. Off we go. All right. Uh, so what's going to happen is you all journey to, uh, the holodeck and, uh, Jana, you sort of flick the switch as it were, you turn the holodeck back on and sure enough, you are detecting that a new program is running. Can I ascertain the nature of this program or? It's one of those things where you could as chief engineer, but you see that it's some form of a personal program. 
So uh, you, again, you could override and figure out who it is, but it is a security matter. Uh, Lieutenant Stetko, I think you might want to take a look at this. Um, I mean, as chief engineer, I could override the security lockouts here just because I could circumvent them. Not to say that your security measures aren't incredibly impressive. It's just, uh, and like not to say would. that I would ever even do that because of course I wouldn't, that would be violating Starfleet you, protocol, you, but it's, it's okay. You have seen yeah. your staff override. It's fine. I, I still, I think this might be better suited to you because then you're responsible for it. True. Uh, not. Jim, can you tell me exactly where we are again? You are on, uh, oh God, what deck is sickbay on? I think we decided it was somewhere between like 36 and 58. So you're like mid station okay. and uh, you are at a holodeck that is just sort of down the corridor from Okay, sickbay. are we at the arch? Yes, you are at the arch. Okay. Um, so she will check the uh, holodeck logs. Mm -hmm. and see if she can spot any anomalies from who has gone in, who has come out. Uh, roll me an insight security difficulty of two. Okay. And I don't know that, well, I guess you would have tactical systems. That technically applies here. Okay. okay. I would certainly take a momentum, at least. Okay. Is that insight Sorry. security? Mm -hmm. I'll buy an extra dice. Hey, two successes, which is what you need. Cool. Uh, no, nothing out of the ordinary, actually. Um, no one's been actually in or out of this uh, holodeck in about 36 hours. Last person that was in here was, um, ironically enough, it was the Cation couple for some reason or another. <laughs> uh, no one significant within the last 36 hours, sir. Just to be clear, are we inside or outside the hall? No, We're you're still arch. outside. Okay. Uh, Kishwick will just try to bring up a visual display of what it's showing on the inside of the holodeck. Uh, interestingly enough, the display does not activate when you try to get a look inside. That's always how these things work. Um, sir, I'd like to go in and clear the area before you go in. Before At you your do, discretion. could we just find out whose program this is, if anyone's? Sure. Is there an author? <laughs> there is. And I'm going to offer you guys either the funny option or the semi-serious option. One, two, three. Wait, what? Um, fun. I want, I I like want the funny. funny. I like funny. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> so you see that it's actually penned, supposedly, by Lieutenant Terrell. Terrell, you have no idea what this is. Jaro, I didn't know that you were a hollow artist. Excuse me? Look right here. Come here. Just taps the screen. Oh, he's certainly not a hollow aviator. Oh, no, that <laughs> I no, I don't do that kind of stuff. I mean, that's your name right there. Uh, congratulations, doctor. You can read. Um, but no, uh, you know, I would have to say it's a forgery or, you know, somebody flattering me with uh, such a artistic project. Is your mom a hollow artist? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, Jaro, didn't you have those holographic training programs that you were going to upload to the uh, to the Umbriel? Yes, but they're not like hollow. No, it's, it, it can't be the same thing. Okay. Let's just open the doors and find out what we're dealing with. Stetko, take point. All right. Do we want to get like some Type Three phasers or something? 
are there phasers in the walls somewhere near she can grab? I mean, if Stecco would have stashed phasers in the walls, yeah. You know, opens a panel, pulls out a bat left. Let's go. Yeah. John, I'm <laughs> disappointed. Um, destruction should not be a primary option for a Starfleet officer. Our duty is the preservation of life. We to just seek want it to out. Get us... Have you yes, met we Lieutenant can... Commander Stetko? We, we can all repeat Archer's script, but right now let's just find out what's messing with the station so the doctor can get back to his doctorly things. So I think she would have grabbed probably two. Mm -hmm. Who wants the other one? Uh, Jaro extends his hand. She'll kind of toss it to him. Oh, that makes me feel better. Last time we tossed a phaser. <laughs> well, um, what what do you always say about feelings, Doctor? I don't know. What do I always say about feelings? Something about your temporal lobe. Hmm. That they're nothing more than feelings? She'll open the door. The door opens, and Terrell? Yeah, you remember this program now, because what's on the other side? But none other than Cord singing his best Klingon opera. And, um, yeah, he's singing about you, Stetko. Computer and program. Wait, wait, the melody actually is quite pleasing. Computer and program. And, uh, when you actually tell the computer to end program, Cord, quote unquote, stops, looks at you, and in a voice that is not his, says... Well, hello there, meat bags of flesh. I was wondering if I would ever run into you. And that's where we're going to take our 10 minute break. <laughs> so we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around. Thank you. 
Right, welcome back and uh, if you're just tuning in well let's just say the metaphorical crap has hit the metaphorical fan or really the holographic one but who's keeping track so yeah a uh, holographic program that looks like cord just called you all meatbags what do you want to do about it it's a gross oversimplification Fishwick will step forward next to Stetco mm -hmm. I'm not sure we've met before. Who are you? Who am I? Well, that's a funny question. You see, I am your god. Which one? And I, I'm going to try doing it with the modulator, but we'll see what happens. You know that sort of stereotypical stuttering laughter that all 
evil people seem to be able to do. It goes a little something like... like... (laughs) Oh, I think you need a demonstration of just how poorly you've been running this station. And uh, coming up the corridor, you hear some form of a bang or a shuffle. And when you look, Kijwick, and all of you will, of course, you know, you guys can look and see the same thing. You see some of your holographic crew coming down the corridor. However, these aren't your normal holographic crew member. Um, They are modified, changed in some way. Uh, Specifically, let's take a human for an example. So the human hologram uh, looks like some form of a mutant where their skin is no longer that pale sort of pink. It is now some form of a red or an orange And instead of uh, normal musculature, you have um, sort of bulging biceps and almost like tentacle appendages where hands once were. These are, to put it bluntly, not the sort of thing you want to have coming at you down a corridor. Boy, I really hate being right all the time. Jaro, Stetko. And Kizwick will nod towards uh, the incoming photonics and he'll look back into the holodeck at whatever it is and what does a god need with a station what does god need with anything other than what he sees fit to use it for And it is at this point, I, I need fire? to know what you guys are doing about those photonics. Uh, at uh, the moment, there's just two of them. But uh, what I would say is, you know what? Let's actually make this a roll. Uh, John, uh, let's have you do this roll. Uh, insight engineering difficulty of two. And if you have anything related to holodecks or replicators, this would apply as a focus. And uh, would I would I know my station apply, or would I have to spend a momentum and get an extra die? Um, I think you're going to have to spend momentum in this instance. Sure. Uh, so, materialization systems. Yeah, I'll give it to you. All right, so you actually get a momentum. So your momentum stays the same. I have good news and bad news. Which would you like? Bad news. Bad news and the bad boys. Okay. Bad news. If you, I mean, and this is just an educated guess, you're not 100% sure, but if you disrupt or otherwise, quote unquote, stun those holographic programs coming at you, it's kind of like the safeties are off. You could do irreparable harm. Irreparable. Yeah, that that word. with the voice. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) You could do irreparable harm. Yeah, uh, you could do that to these holographic crewmen. And the good news? Well, the good news is... Um, actually, I don't have any good news. It was it was a bait and switch. Right, so now you, you're they're, alive. They're, okay. Yeah, you are that? alive. That That is good news. The, the good news is that the phasers will affect them. The mm-hmm. bad news is the phasers will kill them. So, yeah. all right. <clears throat> so, uh, so immediately Jana will grab at the rifle that Jaro is holding and try to force it down to the ground. Captain, we can't shoot them. They'll, they could be killed. Cut down the emitters. Yeah, Stekho was going to shoot at the emitters. Okay. She was probably already trying to aim to do that. All right, so uh, that we, we're all thinking the same thing. Are you shooting the emitters of the holodeck? Or the I'm emitters shooting of the, the emitters in the hallway Okay. Uh, that are projecting the matrix that ne- of the necessary movie. clarifying question yes yeah all right so i need you to roll me because this is going to be difficult because this is sort of a distributed network of systems this isn't just like one emitter like a, a a router that you could just shoot and the router would go down this is like multiple units but i will give you the option of more or less doing an area attack with your phaser which will allow you to hit potentially all the emitters the trade-off is it is going to be higher difficulty. Okay. So this is going to be a control and a security. And the difficulty here will be a four. I'd like to buy 
How much momentum do we have? You have four. 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 I'll buy two extra dice. Okay. How much is momentum? Is that three? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is that okay? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then energy-based small arms technology. Most definitely. Please. Oh, interesting. No! <laughs> interesting. Set. All right. So what legal. happens is Stetco, you go to fire at the emitters and try to hit all of them at once. And I think you maybe get one or two. But what happens is, strangely enough, when you fire that phaser, almost immediately one of the uh, mutant holograms raises their hand and projected from their outstretched palm comes a energy shot at you specifically. So uh, I'm going to say this automatically hits and you are going to take one point of stress damage, not not a whole lot, just just the one. As uh, an energy blast hits you left shoulder, it hurts. It really hurts. That's not a phaser set on stun. That's 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 on kill. Like oh oh yeah. And uh, as you are uh, sort of all seeing this happen, the uh, quote unquote cord says, "I will use your station to subjugate." Not only the human race, but all of the Federation. You all will service me in the way I see fit. I will convert you into beings of thought and of pure being. We've heard a lot of people say the same thing year after year after year, and they're all dead now and we're still here. So if you've got more than a shiny voice and a holographic matrix, uh, why don't you step on out here and we can go mano a mano. All right, so cord, quote unquote. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Would help if I turned <laughs> off the voice changer. Would, would would help? Would help just, just a little bit. The, oh, the hologram. It sounds, it sounds nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So cord. I'm speaking unquote. in third person. Yeah, you know, there you go. That that that's the true horror of this episode is ELH starts speaking in the third person. Uh, no. So cord, quote unquote, steps out of the holodeck. There is no transit. Like it doesn't even shimmer. The hologram doesn't even shimmer. And he very pointedly reaches out a hand and just very briefly sort of touches your chest, Kiswick. And it's like something has literally like sucker punched you in the sternum. Now, you don't go down because of this, but you are going to take some stress damage. Well, it would help if I push the right key here. I have like six hot keys I'm trying to manage right now. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you only take one uh, one point of stress damage here, but uh, yeah, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Those holodeck safeties are not on. Okay, I see what we mean. <clears throat> and I tell you what, I'm actually going to spend uh, two threat to make a complication. You, uh, Kiswick, and I guess sort of everybody, you guys remember the, uh, the first, or no, I guess it was the second Matrix movie where, uh, you know, Neo is in that, uh, one sort of open area park and then a bunch of Agent Smiths come out. The and, uh, Rail. Smith does that thing where he, like, shoves his fingers into the chest and the, the, the goop, as it were, begins spreading. Yeah, Kiswick, you've got a little goop that's, uh, beginning to spread. Um... Uh, Kiswick is going to start pounding on this guy's hand, pushing All right. him away. Uh, go ahead and roll me a daring and security, difficulty of one, and this will be opposed. And then um, we are going to go into structured combat so that we uh, do get everybody in the turn order. Okay. GM, I'm gonna can take, I get a... Uh, oh, I'm going to take non-lethal takedowns as a focus. Okay. And I'm going to use my value. How dare you? How dare you? Did. All right. Uh, how many dice does that give me? Uh, that would give you a total of three. Three dice. Well, it, it's no, technically two, two dice, but yeah. two free successes, right? All right. Um, Jim, could I also get maybe a scan on my medical tricorder to see what is happening, if anything? Uh, you can uh, during your turn. Okay. 
however, Kiswick, uh, there is a possibility for the hologram to fail. But uh, let's let's see what happens. Normally, I'd have a macro for this, but I'm I'm keeping the mystery tonight, and I'm not actually letting it display. Oh my god! Oh my god! Nice knowing you. Okay. No. Um. Okay. So Kiswick, you're oh, now Lord. going to take. Dante, you better uh, be fucking ready. <laughs> yeah, so Kijwick, you're going to take four stress damage as uh, you go in for I, what I'm imagining is maybe a right hook across uh, Cord's face. And, ooh, you get your determination back. Very nice. Uh, so you go in for a right hook across uh, Cord's face, and Cord actually sort of shimmers and phases out, so your fist just passes through him. And then he gives you a sucker punch to the gut. So it it hurts. It hurts a lot. You almost go down, but you manage to just barely stay on your feet. And it's one of those things where before you only had the one bit of goop. Now the second impact, there are now two bits of goop. And we are now going to enter into structured combat. So uh, this is now going to go to... Let's see. So Stetko has already acted. Uh, Kiswick, you just acted. Uh, I believe it's going to be the holographic crew member's turn. Uh, so the one that didn't shoot at Stetko um, is going to more or less produce a hollow batleth and is going to go right for Dottig. So Dottig, I need you to roll me a daring security, please. Difficulty of one. Okay. Also, John, I see your message. It has been noted. Oh, cool. Daring. Security. All right, two successes, which means it's uh, it needs two successes to succeed. It does not get those two successes. So, Dottig, you actually have the ability to counterattack here. Unfortunately, you're uh, you're not armed with anything, so you do a measly two stress of damage, or two challenge die worth of damage. Uh, well, well, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens? Uh, the hollow battle comes down. Dotig, you step out of the way, almost like a sidestep, and then you, in Tellarite fashion, go for a kick to the nads. And it's one of those things where your foot doesn't feel like it connects with anything. In fact, the hologram doesn't even flinch. It just sort of stands there menacingly. Oh, that's not good. But it is now the player's turn again. I believe uh, Terrell, Janna, or Dottig, it is one of your guys' turn. <clears throat> I know the doctor wanted to do a scan. I'm willing to uh, acquiesce to him. All right. I will, I will do a... Uh, I'll try to perform a scan on the captain to ascertain the um, purpose and effect of this black goop. All right, go I, ahead and roll I, me a reason medicine difficulty of four. Okay. And uh, well, I guess my, we should be a red alert too because this is combat. Yeah, would my xenobiology, neuroscience, or virology, or virology um, foci apply? I would give multiple of those to you. Um, you know what? Just because I feel like this is important, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap a value for this. Mm -hmm. um, I will um, tap my value. There is no such thing as the unknown. Okay. And... Oh, dear. Interesting. That's four successes, but there's a complication. So you get a point of momentum, or no, I guess it is difficulty four. So yeah. there's good news and bad news, but let's do good news first. Good news. Well, I guess it's not really good news, but <laughs> you know what this is. Yeah. You remember that okay. one episode of Fenrir where the holograms were sort of doing a, um, they were sick, quote unquote, and a certain uh, Undine made it a, uh, mm -hmm. a real thing. Let's just say someone has uh, taken that idea and turned it up to 11. This is quite literally holographic nanites that are attempting to rewrite the captain's uh, meat bag of flesh. 
uh, in a way that would conceivably convert him to a hologram. Conceivably. Sort of like, um, I, and again, you have to filter this via Dotig's D double minus or whatever it was in engineering. Uh, this is kind of like deconstructing via a transporter, if that makes sense. Oh, dear. Uh, Captain, you shouldn't let that thing touch you anymore. <laughs> that, uh, those, uh, those globules, they are deconstructing you on a submolecular level. Less talking, more fighting. <laughs> Wait, so does Stecco have it too? Oh, yeah, I guess you... Well, no, you were shot with the, the energy weapon, so you're fine at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dottig, uh, you do technically still have in action here. The actual scan was, I'm going to count that as your minor. Okay. Oh, this could be... Oh, right, the complication? Oh, yeah. The complication is, is when your tricorder scans it, your tricorder <laughs> gets infected by the uh, hollow nanites, and you end up having to drop it unless you want the goop on you. Yeah, no, he's just gonna he's just going to huck it. Um, and with that, oh boy, guys, it's happening. Dottig is going to pull his, his type two phaser mm -hmm. and attempt to, um, blast the, um, uh, quote unquote God. Okay. Now I do have to be very specific here because, uh, I guess this is Dottig's first role. So I do want to set him up for success. If you give me a momentum, you mm -hmm. can charge or aim your phaser. Now, yeah. there are benefits to both, but I think we're you would probably going to gonna need momentum. aim. Yeah, okay. probably going to need some aim here because Dottig's... As, as bad as he is at, bad as he is at engineering, he's equally terrible at security. All right, so, so that's going to be a control security difficulty of two. All right. Um, and I'm going to give you a point of threat for an extra die. Okay. I will happily take threat. Oh, I know you will. Okay. No focus. Oh, very nice. That is uh, four successes, which means you get two momentum back. Uh, you're a type two. So what is that? Three, it's four a, challenge die? I think it's four, four challenge yeah. die. Oh, hang on a second. Uh, challenge die four. Wow. That's actually rather significant. So what happens is, Dottig, you pull out your type two. You aim it at God or whatever this thing is. And you fire. And sure enough, the physical form or the quasi-physical form of this creature does disintegrate before your very eyes but the voice persists uh specifically what happens is uh the voice says it matters not how many of my false shells you kill you cannot kill me without killing your precious station give in now and i promise the process of being converted will be mostly painless that is your turn. So it is at this point that I'm going to spend two threat. Two more holographic crewmen are now coming from the opposite side of the hallway. So behind you guys. And I think one of them is going to take a shot at Janna. So let me roll first before we do anything that John had planned. Uh, John, do you want to step in front of this? Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, Jana, you see the uh, mutated hologram raise its hand the same way that it did, or one of the others did at Stetco, and you sort of prepare yourself to get hit, but right before uh, the charged beam sort of fires off, you see a blur of motion, and Terrell actually steps in front of you. And Terrell, I need you to take all, all of just one damage. Just, just one. Okay. Not bad. 
totally worth it. Yep. And yeah. uh, you see that uh, Jana, as he is knocked over to the side and the phaser beam lances out and, la and uh, lands on Jaro, looks absolutely horrified at uh, what has just happened. Well, the good news is it's either Terrell or Jana's action now. You want to go or up to uh, you? Sure, sure. Um, what I'd like to do is contact transporter room one and ask for an emergency uh, transport out of this section of the station. Okay. So you tap your comm badge and immediately what comes over the comm badge is the sound of phaser fire. And you hear, uh, I don't know, do we actually have an, a transporter chief? Do we, do we have someone? Uh, that would be Hoyos. Hoyos, Hoyos, Hoyos. Oh, yeah, I remember them. Uh, that's your character, though, so I don't want you to talk to yourself. Um, oh, you know who we haven't heard in a while? We haven't heard from Sean Conra in a while. So, <laughs> Conra uh, basically says, uh, what, what can I do for you, Sean? We have a situation down here. There's, there's holograms trying to take over pretty much all critical areas of the station. Uh, we need an emergency site to try transport out of this area. We're being attacked, and the captain has been severely injured. Can you be Mr. Sickbay? I can certainly try. And uh, I need someone to pull up Conry's sheet, or Conra's sheet. And I need him to do a control engineering difficulty of three. And I guess the, uh, the station will assist you with a sensors engineering. Uh, I don't think we have access to Conra's sheet. Do you not? Uh, one moment. I can't get it either. One moment. There you, you go. Him, and I'm just now him. seeing that his sheet is blanked. Nice. Uh, oh, I can just, see it now. Well, right, but his stats didn't save. Oh, 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 gotcha. Okay. Uh, tell you what, whoever wants to roll for Conra, just roll me a 2d20. You want a 13 or lower. Would we buy an extra die with that? So it'd probably be good. Yeah, I would. Otherwise, we'll end up with holograms on the other side, I'm sure. Well, I'm glad you already know what my complication was going to be. <laughs> I am playing a security officer. <laughs> True. My job to anticipate. Okay, so that is, nice. uh, you do get your three successes with the, uh, that's, that's actually four successes, so you get one momentum back. So you all dematerialize, and I think I've got a transporter room somewhere. I do. Uh, you all dematerialize, and you arrive in the transporter room. And as I put your tokens on screen here, uh, you've basically left one firefight for another. So let me get Terrell, Dottig... Jana and Stetko. And then Conra is behind the uh, console. And uh, you see that there are actually two uh, individuals uh, fighting at either door that leads into the transporter room. At one door is uh, Senior Chief Kimball. And at the other door is none other than our fearless Lieutenant Jenkins. And uh, let's just say that they look like they've taken multiple phaser hits at this point. It's very obvious that they uh, probably shouldn't take any more. But uh, yeah, that's the situation you find yourselves beamed into. Uh, Stetco will request a status report immediately. Well, to be blunt, shit is fucked. Lieutenant Jenkins, can you be any more eloquent? Yes, it is super fucked. And then he dodges out of the way as another phaser blast almost hits his head, but he gets out of the way and fires back. Who is this cool looking data? Oh, you don't remember Senior Chief Kimball? He's no. uh, Dorset's best buddy. He's the uh, he's the oh, quartermaster's shit. assistant. Shit. So what's his department? Oh, he's uh, he's technically security, operations or he's like that or... security operations crossover. Okay. Um, I'm guessing he wouldn't have answers either. So Stecco doesn't look like a jackass asking a third person. I mean, if you really want to, I have a voice for Kimball too. Um, Kimball, anything? 
I think Lieutenant Jenkins is correct. It, it's totally fucked. Remind me to put you guys at the bottom of the list for promotions. I take that as an insult. Um, I broke John. So we, where are we? I'm looking. Is it just a transporter room? Yeah, it's just a uh, transporter room one, which is actually on deck one. So you guys are on the same level as ops What's and Kiswick's as the captain's status? ready room. Uh, yeah, well. Kiswick, uh, I'm going to actually roll to find out what your status is. Am I still gooey? Uh, you're still gooey, but you're not consumed by said goo. It just gets, it, it spreads a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Do I have a hole in my chest? No, no hole in your chest. Just, uh, silverish goo transferring all over your form. You can still talk and act. You just have that to deal with. Donna, can, sure. would, would you be able to use the force field emitters to tap into the holographic configurations to have all of the photonics on board re-rendered as force fields? That's a rather complex ask, but I can certainly attempt to... Uh essentially recompile their photonic matrices. I'm not sure what that might do to them, but I could try. Either that or shut down all the emitters. That would probably be the simpler option, but uh, I, again, I'm not sure what kind of impact that might have on the photonic crew members. And oh, again, let me be blunt. If you do attempt your little scheme, you pathetic meatbag, not only will you be killing your photonic crewman that you oh so love, but let's just say I'll make more. And I think we both know that my supplies are endless. You are limited by flesh, imperfect flesh, flesh that will be replaced. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, thank you, God. <clears throat> If we can neutralize all of the emitters station wide, we can shut this down at one time. If our holographic crewmen are lost in the process, I will have to deal with that on Starfleet's luxury, but everyone else should be okay. Well, ultimately we'll need to find a way to completely shut this down, whatever the source is. Lieutenant Jano, what is the, or rather, what's the procedure for a complete computer core memory dump? Oh, well, we'd have to probably make it to the central computer core and uh, reinitialize the entire root memory system of our databanks. Hmm. How much does it cost to create Although, an advantage? Uh, it either costs your determination or it costs two momentum. I'm going to spend the two momentum we have. Mm -hmm. Terrell's been doing a lot of transferring of information to the Umbreal mm -hmm. and trying to uh, transfer stuff specifically from hollow programs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, his pad does have access to the central computer system. I'll let it happen, yeah. Uh, he hands that to Jana. Uh, this might help. I've been doing a lot of stuff with the Umbro, as you know, and I, I, to save myself times, so I shunted the core straight through this pad. That is so illegal and so against Starfleet protocol. And I love you because that is exactly <laughs> what you do all the time. And sometimes it's it's so painful and so horrible. But right now, I just I, I love you, man. I whatever you're doing, do it faster. Right. Um I wonder. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh I'll dump the core. All right, so what I'm going to say is that advantage actually makes this task possible. Before, it would have been impossible, like you couldn't even roll for it. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be an extremely high difficulty task. Unless you'd prefer an extended task, which is still going to be high difficulty, but it's not going to be as high. And, uh, Dag, did you get your, mo your uh, determination back when you rolled for it? or I did get my determination back. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
then what I'd suggest you do is that you order me to do this as you have just done. I, I, it's not something that Jana would have done on his own, but could he use the direct task? He could. And that would actually let Kijwick assist you with a uh, presence command of his own. Yeah. Uh, well, also giving me his determination, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, Dad, go ahead and roll. Uh, see if you get the determination right back because... Curiosity. What am I? What am I ordering you to do specifically? Well, Low level format the computer core. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing that I'll say is that Jana would object and suggest another course of action. Um, and I'll run this by you, GM. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to follow through with the the same kind of procedure that we did when we were on Fenrir, and mm -hmm. perhaps create some kind of counter to the nanites. In other words, uh, a kind of immune system of holograms that would destroy the nanites rather than removing the data, create some kind of physical embodiment that would then defeat Spread them. Spread like on itself. Oh, yeah, it was like Alel doing the thing with like her special worms that she kept. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember that? I do. I, I do. Um, I tell you what, I'll let it happen. But in order to do this in the same task, the complication range is going to shoot up significantly. Because if you do it wrong, you basically just make more nanites. Uh, Captain, I, I could attempt to implement a plan that may allow us to save the holographic crew members. But it introduces some danger. Risk is part of the game, Lieutenant. We either shut down the computer altogether and reboot it, or whatever your suggestion is. I don't think we have time for both. It's your order, sir. Do it. Your plan. Thank you for that clarification, sir. Yes, <laughs> right away. And uh, I will attempt to implement this almost antibody plan alongside okay. the computer core. Yep. So, and so I gave you my determination. Mm -hmm. And I'm so rolling roll to see if you get it back. Because uh, veteran rolling... continually activates as long as you roll an effect. Right. Isn't that cool? Um, but I'm also rolling a presence command to assist. Correct. And look at that. You actually get your determination Dang. back again. Very nice. Worth it. Before you roll the assist, is this uh, an extended task or is it the high difficulty task? Well, I'm going to let you be the char the uh, call on that. I'm going to tell you straight up that if it's not an extended task, this is a difficulty of six. If it is an extended task, it starts at a difficulty of five. You know, we're all about go big. <laughs> it's true. And you get two free ones. And if we're all about to die, ELH could just be like, we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> <You're> not wrong. <laughs> uh, I'll leave that up to everyone else. Opinions? So you I did one high shot. Difficulty? Okay, You're a it. miracle worker. So. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm, I am. Are we going to three for three it? Living life on the edge. Yeah. All right, I'm hearing a high difficulty, high complication task. Oh, God, what did we... <sighs> Did we say yes to this? Yeah, we did. I did. Let's do it. Uh, just right. as a refresh, assist is one dice, no focus, Correct. right? Uh, with focus, yes. Okay. Um, remember, too, Captain, that you know if we if we really have to, we basically got all the senior staff here so we can just self-destruct the station. I mean, that is an option. That's the last option, and it's been on my mind. <laughs> Jen's story is not ending that way. I can tell you right <laughs> on a lifeboat. <laughs> We've got escape pods. I'd like to buy two extra dice by giving you threat. Okay. Nice. So two extra Still die with go. threat. That would give me a grand total of five threat because you're using determination here. Yeah. And applicable focus materialization systems or improvisation. I, I'd experimental give you both. technology. Okay. Full focus. Okay, so that is four successes, which is not enough. That is five successes. But I do successes. get to reroll one of those because of advisor, right? Yes, you do get to reroll because he does have advisor. But I think, let me check those zeros real quick. I'm pretty sure those zeros 
Yeah, one of them is a complication. So you might want to yeah, re-roll the 16. complication one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'll just roll a d20. Just All right. And that, nice. is, uh, that is seven successes total, which means you get a point of momentum back. So Drama. what happens here, and I'm actually going to spend two threat to sort of counteract your, not completely counteract, but you know, provide more drama. You are able to create this sort of counter nanite force that will go through and start beginning spreading through the station. And that sort of materializes as almost like a cloud of like blue butterflies that materializes in that space between Jenkins and Kimball that sort of, uh, it's a flock of butterflies that then splits into two and sort of soars out towards the infected holograms. And you, if you were to peek out and look, you would see that these butterflies more or less, quote unquote, consume the infected hologram and begin restoring it. However, as you do this, your, uh, your best buddy comes back and says, I was anticipating something like this. Not to worry, I have my own solution to this problem. And uh, what happens is immediately, all of you, without even needing to roll, hear the hiss of anesthesine gas coming through the life support systems. And that's where we're going to end today's session. So we will be back in two weeks on this cliffhanger. What did you guys think? Just hold my breath for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, very interesting. Love the mm -hmm. voice. It's great. Yeah, the voice was uh, the voice was uh, something I wanted to try out because I was sort of doing it for my cyberpunk game, and I was like, "Hey, you know what? Let's try it here." In your cyberpunk That's great. game, is it the rampant AI or the corporate handler? Uh, no. Let me uh, give you a, sa a sample here. The corporate handler. It's uh, it's actually them on the telephone. That's uh, oh, Mr. Nice. Johnson uh, saying, "Hey, I need you to go whack so and so. I need you to go steal so and so." Never trust the Johnson. Never trust Mr. Johnson ever. But yeah, sounds like we all had fun. But yeah, unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, in some aspects, our next session of October will be November tenth. Until then, uh, this is where I'm going to end the YouTube recording. Twitch, stick around for just a little bit longer because I, oh, wait, I have to run the credits. Okay, so <laughs> let's actually find somebody to raid before I do the credits because that's what we do now because I am on top of my shit. Uh, who are we going to raid? Do who the credits in the voice. I, maybe. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So uh, I'm going to send you guys over to Yancha. And the raid message is going to be ELH deep voice raid because she's going to have no fucking idea what that is. And she's going to be like, what are you doing, ELH? But yeah, <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you in a bit.